Mr. Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, it's time for us to check out the papers this morning. We call it Off the Press. We have Chris Kane in Wandu, who's on standby. He joins the conversation in no time. Good morning, Chris. It's good to have you join us. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you, Chris. All right, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning and we'll pay attention to the top stories on the leadership. The banner caption reads, Terrorists bomb Kaduna Rail. I uh, take that again. Terrorists bomb Kaduna Rail tracks. 970 passengers stranded. Underneath are attackers over 50 in number. Uh, that's what the victim is quoted to say, and travelers feared kidnapped. Very unfortunate incident. Uh, PDP presidential race not for 70 year old, or Tom is quoted. And you have Nigeria Air applies for operation license, notifies NCAA. 2023, I want to help Buhari finish strong. The central bank, uh, the CBN governor, Godwin Emefili, is quoted to say. And uh, 12 coups in Africa in five years, unacceptable. The vice president orders the quoted to, uh, to say that this is not acceptable. And talking about the ASU, you have the NITDA says the UTAS failed 156 out of 687 tests. So I feel like this is going to go on for a very long time uh, between the federal government and ASU. Federal government orders shutdown of offices for Nigeria and Ghana match today. There's also a video that made it, you know, that surfaced on uh, the internet. And the video talked about, you know, having the Black Stars, that's Ghana, uh, training in, in, in darkness yesterday, uh, the Abuja Stadium. I mean, really don't know what the issue is. But one would think that if it's going to be a match, whatever it takes, if, we, if it takes us getting all of the generators to be working. Because people are already feeling that this is a reprisal attack of what happened with the boys. But it, even though it's not necessarily their fault. But we'll move away from that. National Convention, PDP suits against APC act of desperation uh, that's what the federal government's quote as i say these are some of the headlines on the leadership away from the leadership uh, next is the punch newspaper national convention is uh, the lead story Arek Beshola lies allies aggrieved chieftain supporters dump apc crisis lingers in kwara oshun zamfara orders despite buhari's plea Aggrieved party members refuse to withdraw court cases and state Adamo's peace panel fails to beat deadline on report submission. That's uh, the lead story on the Punch newspaper. Other stories are making headlines or making front page. Train derails as terrorists bomb Abuja Kaduna rail track. Eight killed in co as cultists engage into primacy battle in Ogun State. Nalge plans protests as uh, state assemblies get constitution amendment bill today. Other stories on the front page of The Punch. 1.8 million candidates register for UTME, JAM, partner CBT centers on diesel costs. Kaduna Airport not attacked, 12 terrorists eliminated, uh, military is quoted on that one. 2023, and building strong financial system supporting Buhari, says Emefili, that's the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Above the masthead, there are some stories there. Marketers uh, blame oil price, Forex as cooking gas price rises again. Mm, cooking gas again, LPG. Well, moving on, Abakari orders transferred to prison. Court denies DCP bill. All right, uh, those are the stories, uh, most of the stories you can find on the Punch uh, newspaper on the front page this morning. Away from the Punch newspaper, uh, we take a look at the Daily Independent. Uh, the top story here says, stakeholders differ over 92 billion naira for Abuja Airport second runway. Say amount outrageous for a four kilometer runway. No need for another. Tax federal government on details of approval to further boost transparency. Uh, these are riders underneath the caption. 
Increase in price of food stuff, petrol not limited to Nigeria. Increase in price of food stuff and petrol not limited to Nigeria. I mean, this is what the federal government is quoted to say. Lai Mohammed, uh, you know, putting all of that. Uncertainty over resumption date of Adamu led APC working committee. Mm. Interesting. Commercial activities paralyzed in Oweri, Oka, Onicha, and Enugu. Gunmen enforce sit at home order and shoot passengers. And you also have alleged 2.9 billion fraud. Court threatens strike. Uh, court threatens to strike out EFCC suit against Okorocha. My focus is on building strong financial system. Help Buhari finish strong, says Godwin Emefili, uh, the CBN governor's quoted on that. Nigerian community decries delayed justice over killing of compatriots in South Africa. These are the headlines on the Daily Independent. And the last uh, paper we uh, reviewed this morning is the nation. The late story that Tita Buha set standard in leadership, says uh, Buhari. Uh, uh, President Lawan Bajabia Miller orders uh, hail former Lagos governor at 70, Wiki Anim, uh, saying South deserves a PDP presidential ticket. Telecom blackout likely in Abuja, Ondo, Ekiti, others. No distraction, please, Emifili tells campaigners. Those are the stories, that, uh, most of the stories on the front page of the nation newspaper this morning. Well, let's have Chris Kende uh, join the conversation now. Once again, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time always. Thank you for having me once again. So let, let's go through uh, the pages of a national dailies. And looking at the leadership newspaper this morning, it talks about the attack on uh, the train uh, yesterday or last night in Kaduna. Um, yes, the attack on the train... Um, um, Abuja Kaduna Band Trade uh, is a, another milestone in the terrorist attacks in Nigeria. Um, don't forget, this is not the first time. I think this is the second time this year. Uh, that was a one that also happened a few months back. And um, but it goes to show that um, nowhere is safe any longer. And this is coming on the heel of another attack barely four or five days ago uh, at the Kaduna International Airport, um, where uh, an aviation worker was also killed when some um, terrorists um, invaded the airport and also uh, blocked the wrong way, stopping uh, planes from taking off. Um, this is another dimension to the uh, insecurity across the land. And I've said it time with them, none by again, except we're able to need this in the board and make sure that most of these culprits are brought to proof then we are going to have a bigger challenge. And after that attack at the airport, and I've said it, and God forbid, what are we looking at again? We might be shocked that before we know it, um, we might just have some of these terrorists hijacking planes and doing some of these things that we hear across other groups, uh, other parts of the world. But um, it is uh, quite unfortunate. They, they, what they did was to blow up the rail track Making it impossible for the uh, for the plane to uh, uh, train to move, a train with over 970 passengers at night. And basically, let me tell you, the reason why most people use that rail is because the uh, Katuna Abuja Expressway is no longer safe. People are being kidnapped on a daily basis. People are being killed on a daily basis. That route has become one of the most dangerous uh, roads in Nigeria. And for that, people now resort to train, but it's so obvious that the train itself is even not getting, it's not even safe. And that is even the worst. If you know the large volume of uh, number of people that bought train, this one was um, carrying 970, close to 1,000 people. If they're able to make their way into those trains and they have double people, or a lot of uh, a lot of things would have happened. But we heard that security agencies were able to move in swiftly and get them dislodged, and, um, and that was it. But since they attempted this and the war, you can be rest assured there is a possibility that they are going to attempt it again. And this, to me, is a very um, dangerous uh, dimension to uh, terrorism, banditry, or whatever you call it in Nigeria. And our security agencies should be wake up to these responsibilities before it gets out of hand. Okay, but just before, I mean, Justin, you know, comes in now on any of the headlines. 
In 2015, I mean, we can't forget to ignore 2015 because the president, at the time when he was campaigning before he became president, he'd made promises. And it was on this, he said, Boko Haram will be crushed. He would ensure that, you know, lives and properties of Nigerians are secured. We're seeing things that didn't, I mean, we're not saying that security or insecurity was not an issue prior to this time. But this is so much, you know, boldness. First, you have bandits getting to the airport. I mean, to, they even disrupted, you know, the flight movement. And you also, again, just a few days after, you, you have these bandits also attacking the, the, the train track and therefore, uh, you know, causing a lot of persons to be stranded. And we saw uh, the, the, the pictures from that incident. Really, really sad. What is really emboldening or, you know, enhancing and, and making this uh, security, I mean, some of these elements, I like to call them elements, bandits, Boko Haram, what's, what's giving them this moral? What's... what's um, fanning their wings and making them very bold with all of these moves. First of all, let's correct the notion these are not bandits, they are terrorists. We should just continue calling but, but them they haven't, bandits. But they haven't that been proscribed bandits. They're, they're still called that, bandits. I mean, no one has proscribed no. them as bandits. And the court, there is a court order to that effect. There is a court order to that effect. But has so it been affected? It's not for me, it's for the executive to do that. You cannot do that. But the fact is that these are not bandits, they are terrorists. And we should call them what they are. And that is part of the problem we are having because of impunity. Until we start getting these people and make sure that they face um, the, 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 the full rot of the law, this will continue because they believe that they'll get away. Some of those that were arrested, uh, the Boko Haram uh, the member that were arrested, what happened to them? They granted them uh, immunity. And they said they have rehabilitated them. Some of them went back to what they are doing. These are people that have been killing innocent Nigerians, destroying Nigeria in all aspects of it. But what happens? But you look at the Southeast, and which is why most of the time some of us look at this and say, is there any correlation between the government and what is happening? The, when the uh, agitators in the Southeast uh, call themselves IPOP, or even those in the Southwest, are agitating. The full rot of the law is being down on them. The soldiers are sent into the street to kill or maim or to arrest most of them. And these are people that practically, at least during the early stages of the agitation, we are not violent at all. Let's see what is happening in the north. On a daily basis, people are being kidnapped, people are being killed, evasion of uh, rich tracks, uh, evasion of, um, uh, uh, of um, airports, killing of uh, people at the airport. And nothing seems to. So until we wake up the body language of the government towards the issue of terrorism as it were, for me, it's not good enough. Until we start doing the needful, make sure that most of it, what of those are all those that have been arrested for uh, terrorism. Don't forget that some time ago, uh, we had the AGF telling us, well, we have over 100 something people that have been arrested for terrorist acts, they'll be, uh, that they'll be arrayed in court. This is good to months and years now. Nobody has been arrested. Something happened in Dubai, um, uh, United Arab Emirates, some time ago, where some people were figured as being sponsors of Boko Haram in Nigeria. They were quickly around their door, tried and jailed. But so if you continue to play uh, the issue of security with kid law, this is what you get. Because the, the guys will continue to get them, knowing fully well that nobody is going to touch them. If we are there any arrests after this attack at the airport, if they are arrested, when are they going to be tried for terrorism? Terrorism carries the capital punishment, which most often are not. It's either death sentence or life imprisonment. But it just is that most of these guys are just treated with kick off, and that is what is happening. Until we start doing the needful, All right. the worst is yet to come. Yeah, All right, uh, Chris, uh, let's uh, move away from that. Uh, we will still discuss um, the um, Kaduna Abuja uh, train attack uh, much later on the show. But let's talk about other stories uh, making headlines. Let's move on to the Punch newspaper this morning and um, the National Convention, the ABC National Convention is leading on the Punch. And uh, the main story there, Avrag Beshola, Lai Mohammed, some ally, a grieved chieftain supporters dump APC. It's as though it is not yet Uhuru uh, for the All Progressives Congress, uh, despite um, their so-called successful uh, Congress on Saturday, Sunday. What do you think, Chris? 
Expectedly, it's expected. We also knew that there was going to be an inclusion in the ruling party once after the, that convention. That is what you get when you impose people and uh, you agree on consensus candidate, candidate, consensus candidate, and the rest of them. There is no way that some certain people won't be agreed by what happened. If you look at the the way and manner the APC conventions were held, you will see that so many bablos were drawn. Uh, most of the candidates. Um, you saw some of them practically crying when they were asked to step down. When they pick up the mic, you see what they were saying. Most of them say they wanted to contest, but they are being forced. Even a former minister um, came out to say that he wanted to contest, I think, for the post of national secretary. And was told how he, sp he spoke on how he was forced to uh, just send his ambition to become the national secretary of, um, um, of the APC. Well, the party was able to rally around itself um, by holding that convention, and the president was able to step in to make sure that uh, um, certain things were done so that there wouldn't be so much rancor within the ranks of APC members. But it would take a long time for that to totally heal. And that is why some of us have said that the way we are going about our democracy, is this truly a democracy? Because the definition of democracy is government of the people by the people and for the people. What are, we are seeing now is the government of a few who sit down, pick um, uh, people, and just throw them to the national arena as well, without giving any huge to the aspirations uh, uh, and um, desires of most members of the political parties. The way and manner the consensus candidates we are picked, uh, the APC is going to leave so much to be desired. Don't forget that there were six, seven people that contest, we wanted to contest for that national chairmanship of APC. The six we are asked to step down for the eventual um, and what is more even uh, lovable to me is that this is a party that came in uh, in 2015. I say one of the reasons why they, they want to take over power is PDP destroyed Nigeria. That for 16 years, PDP destroyed Nigeria. But go and look at the hierarchy of the new members of the National Executive Council of APC. All of them, practically all the, at least the top, the top ones, um, we are members of the APDP. The national uh, chairman was the governor of um, Nasarawa State, two-time PDP national um, the governor of uh, uh, um, Nasarawa State. He also went to the Senate as a member of the PDP before he moved to the APC. Today, is a renewed and a born again. The national secretary of Michel was of the PDP also. Uh, today, is also so. So, but I expect that the, um, the APC have set up a reconciliation committee, which was initially also headed by the current chairman that was elected. But that report of that committee, I don't think has been submitted. And uh, I think they will do everything possible to make sure that everybody is reconciled so that they can get ready for the 2023 uh, election. Okay, away from that, let's, let's look at the Daily Independent newspaper. And uh, the, the Federal Executive Council has approved uh, 92 billion naira for Abuja Airport second runway. And now stakeholders are saying that this is not necessary. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, back and forth. Mixed reaction, if you want to say. Uh, some people are saying the amount is outrageous for a four-kilometer runway. There's no need for another one. Uh, you also have others saying that the federal government should be taxed on the details of approval to further boost the transparency. This project or construction of this uh, runway, it's in, you know, different phases. I mean, the approval. What are your thoughts? Do you think that we need a second runway? Uh, the airports, or and do you think this amount is outrageous? Um, I'm sure before the uh, uh, government came up with that um, budget uh, for that, they must have done their due diligence, and they must have also consulted with several um, operators within the industry and to be able to get the best out of them. Whether it is too much or not too much, I'm not in a position to say because I, I don't, I, I've never constructed a runway before. I don't know how much it takes to consult a runway. So, but whether that we should have a second uh, runway, yes, we should. Um, each of us, especially the most important airports, the Lagos and the Abuja International Airport, should have a second runway. The essence of that is that if anything happens, there's only, there will be an alternative runway. Um, God forbid if there's anything happen within the, uh, a, a particular runway, that runway will be shut down for as many hours as possible or even days until. That has been that has been done. Don't forget that when they when they were having a, a reconstruction of the Abuja runway for some weeks, I think for some weeks or even for weeks, 
flights were diverted to some other states, especially I think Kaduna International Airport. People coming to Abuja from all parts of the world, we are using the Kaduna Airport. You can see how unsafe the Kaduna Airport now. So if there's anything that happened to the only runway we have, and we start diverting a flight, both international and local flights to um, uh, Abu, um, to Kaduna, then we're going to have problems. The road is not safe, as we said earlier on. The rail, the rail is not also safe. So, so many other countries across the globe, you go to major cities and the airports in the world, they will always have a second, or some people have as many as two, three, four uh, runways. So I think there's a need for us to have a second uh, runway um, so that we don't get ourselves uh, caged into a particular situation where we cannot get But as to the, the cost, um, uh, the, the, the House and the National Assembly have oversight functions on issues like this. And I believe that they should be able to look at it and make sure that um, we don't get an overbloated um, contract for the runway. As, it were, but as I said, I don't know how much it costs to run. You know, uh, the, the reason for, for that is because prior to this time, they were looking at 67 billion naira, and all of a sudden, uh, there's a jump for, from, you know, 67 billion naira, you know, to 92 billion naira. Inflation rate also sets in. Inflation rate sets in. So it, it, I don't know when that budget was made. So inflation rate, but I'm not, as I said, I am not in any way um, say that I approve the amount. I don't know. I'm not in a position to say. I think uh, we should be able to call inflation expert, uh, maybe to the program um, one of these days to talk to them, let them give us a break. And mess with your life. In the fact, I don't, I don't like speculating on what I don't know. If you ask me other issues that I know about them. But for me, we need the second wrong way. But the National Assembly should do their oversight function on issues like this. It was it budgeted for, if it was budgeted for, how much was budgeted, if there had been variation, why the variation, and why, why is it this expensive? So if they're able to do that, they can be able to, uh, be able to control that. But if they, if they shy away from their uh, responsibilities, then it becomes a problem. But I still believe that we need both, uh, we need a second runway, both in Lagos and Abuja. That's if we don't have a second runway in Lagos already. All right, Chris, uh, uh, insecurity is still plaguing different parts of um, the country as we speak. Uh, yesterday in the news, on the, on the punch, it was um, that um, eight people were killed as a um, uh, court as a battle for supremacy. We, we also had what happened in Kaduna State, you know, Kaduna, Abuja, uh, you know, train attack. But then the Daily Independent also has um, another one there, uh, commercial activities and paralyzed in Ore, Oka, Onich, and Enugu as a gunman in force, seated home order, shoot passengers. Chris, what do we have in our hands? This issue of insecurity is just uh, continuing unabated across board all over the geographical locations of the country. It's not just over the Oka and the Nugu. The police station in my local government, Obo, our, the headquarters of Otoko, the headquarters of Obo, local government in Imo State. Our police station was attacked and um, policemen were injured, uh, uh, properties destroyed. And those pictures got to me last night. And um, that shows you the level of insecurity. So it's not just, it has, it has gotten to me too. So my local government police station in Obo local government of Imo State was attacked also and the policemen were injured. That shows the level of, uh, the height of it and insecurity across the land. Few weeks ago, I think it was last week or there about, the president invited the, uh, my governor, Governor Opus Odema, to uh, Asoro, where they discussed the issue of security. And I learned, and um, I, we were told that more security agents will be posted to Imo State from the police and uh, the civil defense. But it seems that that is, is not having any effect at all. Then moving to other part of um, the, 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 the Southeast, Governor um, um, Charles Oludo, said that ask all workers, um, federal government and um, state government workers to resume work every Monday and all markets should be open. And is that nothing will happen. But from the report we are getting now, it seems that that's fell on death, uh, on death here because practically the, the whole of the Southeast and Anambra was sh were shut down yesterday. And um, those that made attempt to come out um, from the reports we are getting were shot. So that is the high level of insecurity in the Southeast, especially this Monday, Monday routine that. And that in itself is killing all sorts of economic activities in Southeast. And to me, that is self-inflicting. When I continue to hear people say, oh, it is Apple or not Apple. Apple has come out to categorically say that 
they have nothing to do with the sit at home, that they've not given any order for anybody to sit at home. The only time that they are that people to stay at home is whenever Nam Tekalu is going to court. But as of today, it seems that some people are benefiting from this action and so on. And that is why I also blame our security agencies. How come they have not been able to arrest some of these people and make sure that they face? So uh, everything still boils down to our security agents, just as it's happening in Kaduna, as it's happening in Zaria, as it's happening in other parts of the north. Those in the south are not also picking the kids. Good enough, yesterday, the 82nd Div of the Nigerian Army uh, moved to some places in Anambra State where they were able to distort, uh, dislodge some so called ESM members. And I saw the rifle, oh, about 32 rifles we are recovered from that. That shows you that is just from one camp. 32 rifles is all over the, all over the, go to our page, you see it as well. That shows you the level of security and the arms in the hands of so many people. And we are not doing anything possible to be able to take out, uh, take out these arms. And as we're moving to 2023, I'm telling you that it's going to be worse. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Chris Kende uh, Wandu, for being part of the show this morning. We do appreciate your thoughts, always. Thank, thank you very much for having me, and do have a nice day. Right, thank you, too. You too. Well, that's the size of it for Off the Press, and we will definitely return with Off the Press tomorrow. In the meantime, let's tell you what happened today in history. When we return, it will be time for our first major conversation. Please stay with us.